Welcome to Duke University Libraries Preservation, Care, and Handling for Special Collections. This presentation is designed to be used as a refresher training or for new staff, students, and interns who plan to work with special collections materials. This presentation provides the basics of care and handling for rare materials. It covers an overview of how damage can occur to library and archival collections, ways to identify and prevent preservation problems in collection storage areas, how to carefully handle rare materials, and some best practices for processing collections. Organic materials such as paper, skins, and cloth break down over time. Some materials, such as acidic papers and inks, deteriorate quicker than others. Collection materials degrade faster if they are stored in poor environmental conditions and have exposure to high heat, humidity, atmospheric pollutants, or UV light. The items shown here show damage and degradation because of the materials with which they were produced. While not entirely preventable, this deterioration can be slowed greatly if materials are stored in a good environment. Fortunately, we have good environmental controls in our collection storage areas, but we have to be vigilant at monitoring and maintaining them. Pests can also do incredible damage to library and archival materials. They can chew holes in paper and covering materials and leave stains that are hard to remove. Mice and insects such as book lice, cockroaches, houseflies, silverfish, and termites all pose a danger. It is most important to look for active insect activity while accessioning incoming collections. If you see evidence of an insect infestation such as damage, insect carcasses, or waste, please notify conservation. Mold can be hazardous to one's health as well as to collection materials. Active mold growth will likely occur when the relative humidity reaches 70% or higher, or in isolated pockets of high humidity, such as what would be found uh, from a pipe leak or a puddle of water in the stacks. Like the mold you find on food in your refrigerator, active mold is fuzzy and oftentimes white or brightly colored. It can be spotted on the spines and text block edges of shelved books. Mold grows on materials that are damp, and the material needs to be dried out thoroughly in order to stop the mold growth. If you see any evidence of leaking or pooling water, or an active mold outbreak in the stacks, please, not please notify us in conservation and your supervisor immediately. These items were damaged by water and mold that is now inactive. Inactive mold is found on materials that are dry. It's powdery and smeary and oftentimes dark brown or black. Inactive mold can cause allergic reactions and can be a lung irritant. In an effort to prevent exposure and the spread of mold spores, items like this should not be handled by staff or patrons and instead should be bagged and sent to conservation for vacuuming and cleaning. Please see our mold presentation for more in-depth information on dealing with mold while working with special collections. There are many ways to help prevent these preservation problems. Keep stack areas tidy and pathways clear so that problems can be spotted with ease. Never store collection materials on the floor. Keep on the lookout for water leaks in areas where collections are stored. Look for evidence of pests or active mold growth and notify your supervisor of any of these issues. One of the most important things that staff and patrons can do is to wash their hands before handling rare materials and after eating so as to prevent soiling pages and bindings. If you notice that your hands have become soiled while handling collections, take additional periodic breaks to wash and dry your hands. Dry your hands thoroughly. Do not apply lotions before handling collection items either as they will leave oily residues on bindings and pages. Avoid touching your face while handling materials. At all times, staff should keep food and drink away from collections and all work surfaces where rare materials are handled. Always use pencils, not pens, around rare materials. Never use tape on collection items or boxes. 
In addition, please avoid inserting any material into bindings or folders unless it is undyed, archival paper, or interleaving, as the same materials may cause staining and embrittlement. Staff and patrons should never examine materials off of the tabletop surfaces or in their laps. Items should always be placed back into their folders or enclosures before moving them or carrying them any distance. Use a cart whenever possible and always when moving more than one item. Never apply post-it notes directly onto collection materials or bindings. It's fine to use post-its as temporary labels on the outside of enclosures, but never inside of them. Protect fragile paper from fasteners. Stainless steel or plastic paper clips are acceptable in some situations and can be used directly only on very sturdy paper. Use a thin archival paper or mylar slip as a protective barrier between the paper clip and any fragile material. Fasteners should never be used on brittle paper. Consider using archival paper interleaving, mylar sleeves, or a separate folder to group associated material when it is very fragile. Never use stiff, dyed, or acidic paper flags to mark pages in books or archival collections as they can damage the paper. Always use lightweight archival permalife flags. Remove all flags after use and before reshelving. The head caps of bindings are particularly fragile and can tear easily. Avoid pulling a book by the top of its spine, which can cause the spine to tear and the binding to weaken. Remove a book by pushing on either side of it holding the desired volume firmly by the boards and pulling it out straight from the shelf. If you must shelve or pack a book upright, place it so that the spine edge is down. Arranging it four edge down causes the text block to sag and separate from the binding. Shelf books so that they are standing straight and are supported by books on either side or by bricks or bookends, rather than leaning, which can weaken their bindings. Do not shelve books too tightly and don't force too many books to fit onto a shelf. Instead, shift books on neighboring shelves to create space. Don't stack books in piles for long periods of time. And don't stack a heavy book on top of a light or fragile book. Similarly, when stacking manuscript boxes, make sure to place heavy boxes on the bottom of the stack. Be careful not to overload book trucks as they can become unwieldy and likely to tip. Try to keep material from extending over the edge of your truck as they can be impacted and damaged during movement. Support books with bricks or bookends or lay them flat for transport. And of course, take special care when entering and exiting the elevator or going over uneven surfaces when transporting a book truck. Reshelve items so that they do not extend past the front edge of the shelf. There is a great risk of impact damage from carts moving up and down the aisles. When working in the stacks, keep an eye out for items that may have been shelved improperly and carefully push them back into place. Ask for assistance. Never try to move a heavy or oversized object alone. Lift with a partner and transport heavy and oversized items on a cart whenever possible. Discuss your plan for how and where to move an object with your partner before you pick it up. Use a stepladder to remove or reshelve an item high up on a shelf in order to avoid handling the item awkwardly or in a manner in which it is not fully supported. If you need to use a step stool to retrieve or reshelve items, take a moment to position and approach it properly. Step firmly on the lowest step to engage the springs and ensure that the ladder does not move before climbing. For the larger step ladders, it may be helpful to place items on the top platform, climb to the appropriate height, and then pick up the item again to reshelve. You can also ask a staff member to hand you items from below after climbing the ladder. When processing collections, leave plenty of clear table space for the items being worked on 
and keep ink pads and sharp objects away from collections at all times. Work with only one item or folder at a time as large stacks could topple over and make sure papers aren't dangling over the table edge. Write on folders only when you're sure that they are empty. When housing manuscript materials, all items should be unfolded whenever possible and placed inside folders larger than the item. Mylar sleeves and interleaving should be the size of the folder as well. All folders should be of a standard size and fitted to the appropriately sized manuscript box. Be sure to fill boxes so that their contents do not slump or have room to shift during transport. Empty folders can be rolled to create a box spacer, or you can contact Conservation for a custom-made spacer. If you're using a document box that is too large for the item, you need to fill the space so that the item doesn't shift while being transported. The best way to do that is to use a piece of corrugated board, cut and folded, to make a spacer. If resources or time don't permit you to make these, we have been successful in using what we call the burrito. It's made out of a piece of 10-point folder stock, cut to the width of the space that you need to fill, rolled into a tube. I start by rolling it rather tightly and then allowing it to expand while holding it to fit the space you need. And using a piece of buffered tissue paper, cut a little bit longer than the width of the tube. I wrap the tube in the tissue. Tuck in the ends. This keeps it from unrolling without using any adhesive and place it in the box. Manuscripts should be properly supported while handling. Documents should be lifted with two hands and not by one corner only. Assess the material condition before handling each item and avoid handling damaged or vulnerable areas. Take your time and always assume that material is more fragile than it looks. Avoid removing material from mylar unless absolutely necessary. Mylar is statically charged and fragile paper can be difficult to remove safely. Ask for help when needed. Really fragile paper should be supported and turned by using a backing sheet, such as a piece of interleaving, a piece of mylar, or the folder itself. Items can be turned over by closing the folder and using both hands to support the folder on either side while gently flipping it. Oversized flat paper items should be handled and turned over by two people. Unless they are in mats or polyester sleeves, photographic prints and negatives should be handled while wearing clean gloves to prevent fingerprints from transferring to the delicate emulsion surfaces. Dirty cotton gloves can be washed and reused and nitrile gloves can be recycled. For a full list of other materials that should be handled with gloves, please see our objects handling training presentation. Paper produced in the past 150 years is likely to be even more brittle and fragile than paper produced several hundreds of years ago. And this is largely due to the wood pulp paper fibers and the paper making process used. Pay particular attention when handling these materials as edges can chip and break quite easily. Use a micro spatula to safely lift and separate pages that are brittle. Try to keep the loose parts together. Brittle materials make excellent candidates for preservation enclosures, such as mylar sleeves and boxes. Bookboards are likely to loosen and fall off over time if they are not properly supported during use. Rare books should be supported with foam wedges or cloth futons and only light weight or pressure should be used to hold texts open. Books should never be forced open to an angle that they don't open to with ease, as this can break their bindings, sewing, and pages. Please examine the examples here for how to properly support various types of bindings with foam wedges and spine supports. 
To use a book futon, simply roll it into a tube. Use two per book, one for the back, one for the front. Position the futon so that the book is well supported. If you need to weight your page, a light curtain weight can be put on there to keep the page down. If you have a particularly big book or you're just looking at the front of the book, it might be that you have to roll two together to give you a large enough and firm enough roll to support the boards. Again, you might need a light curtain weight to keep the page open. If you have a very small book, you can use part of a roll on either side. Again, a curtain weight to keep it open. You want to roll enough of a tube to support the boards and the joint to relieve stress on the spine, but still be able to read your book. Books with fold-out materials should also be handled with particular attention. Care should be taken when unfolding and refolding such pages so that tears don't develop, plates aren't misfolded, and pages aren't protruding from the foredge after refolding. Clasps can also present some challenges during handling. The best way to unlatch a clasp is to squeeze the boards together to lessen the tension on the clasp and then release it. If the strap of the fastening is weak or damaged, support it during handling. Squeeze the boards together again while relatching the clasps. Be sure to insert barcode and call number flags into the front or back covers of the books or into their enclosures but not into the middle of the text, as this can cause damage to fragile paper. Please leave any material in need of repair or boxing and used in the reading room on the conservation shelves and reserves. We review these shelves periodically and route material to conservation as needed. Leave a note on the Aeon slip if the damage isn't obvious at first glance. Material with loose parts that are vulnerable to loss should be placed here along with fragile items that need enclosures. Items in Tyvek envelopes with a return to conservation sticker should also be placed here. Any items with uncut pages should be okayed for treatment by the curator before they're transferred to conservation. Material from Smith can be shipped to conservation directly. Please notify our registrar when you are going to send materials so that we know when to expect them. When packing your crate of rare materials to ship across campus or to the LSC, pack them in bins with plenty of foam and bubble wrap to cushion their transport. Pack books flat with spines together, if at all possible. But if you have to pack them upright, make sure they are wrapped well, packed tightly, and are placed spine edge down. For additional information on shipping rare materials, see also our more in-depth training presentation and policies for shipping special collections. Thanks for helping us keep our special collections in good condition by following these practices and by helping patrons to do the same. Please contact Conservation Services if you have any questions or need assistance.